Let's do a few examples of finding derivatives involving e to the x. So first of all, we have d dx of negative five e to the x. Um, and so again, our, the coefficient rule applies to not just polynomials, but all functions. So basically we have negative five times e to the x. Well, that, that negative five could be passed through the derivative. It will not affect it. So this would be equal to negative five d dx of e to the x. And since we know the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, nothing will change and basically this derivative is just exactly equal to itself negative 5 e to the x now remember that this rule applies to specifically e to the x but if we have a difference in the exponent or if it's multiplied or divided by other things you want to not you got to be careful and make sure you're using the other rules of differentiation correctly but when it comes to a coefficient since the coefficient does not affect the derivative um, nothing will change and the derivative of any number out front of an exponential will um, just retain its derivative as well. Now let's say we had x cubed times e to the x. Again, since there are different x's, this, this same rule does not apply. You cannot pass x cubed through d dx because it involves x. So how do we do it? Well, again, it's a product, so we need to use the product rule. We have this times this, so again, we would have first d second plus second d first. So first is x cubed d second. Well, derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so that's pretty easy. Plus second d first derivative of x cubed is 3x squared so what this would leave me with is a combination of x cubed times e to the x and e to the x times 3x squared now normally we would write uh the like the standard way of writing polynomials that also involve e would be typically to put the e at the end so i'd write this as x cubed e to the x plus 3x squared e to the x would be a little bit more standard or we could also write this by factoring out a common factor because notice that the final answer involves a lot of commonalities like x squared and e to the x which could be factored out which would leave me with x plus 3. Um, and again either either form of this answer uh, would be fine there you know one is just factored the other but again we want to simplify and write things um cleanly anyways um similarly if we had e to the x divided by x and we wanted to know the derivative of this whole thing again since it's a fraction we would need to use the quotient rule since it's this divided by this i need to do low d high minus high d low square the bottom away we go so low d high Again, derivative e to the x is just e to the x, so that's always the easiest. It's the easiest derivative it, it, there is. Um, and that's one way you can remember it. Um, so it's low d high minus high d low. Well, derivative of x is just the slope 1, so I'll just skip that. But we would have e to the x times 1, which would just be e to the x, of course. Square the bottom away we go. So all of that would be divided by x squared. And again, similarly, we could factor out e to the x from this if we wanted to e to the x, and that would leave us with x minus one over x squared. Um, and yeah, there we go. That's the derivative of that one. You can see that these ones aren't too bad. Really, it comes back down to remembering rules such as the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. And say I had the derivative of e to the negative three x or uh, more generally, let's also look at what's the derivative of e to the px, or I guess let's use k as a more common number for a constant. Because this is another helpful one to remember, and we'll do that in just a second. But basically, um, how I could think about this is I have e to not, like, and one of the ways I like to phrase the chain rule in last week's videos was if you have another function on the inside, the chain rule must always be applied because derivative e to the x is e to the x, but this only works if it's exactly e to the x. If it's something else, it's gonna have it's the de the derivative won't be as simple. And a common error or mistake I've seen is students just say, okay, the derivative of this is just e to the negative three x because derivative is just the same thing. But that's wrong because this only works for e to the loner x. When there's something else in there, we have to take that into consideration, and that's when the chain rule comes into play. Because I could think about this as e to the f of x. Uh, and again, to do the chain rule, we can take the derivative of the exterior function first. Well, e to the x, the derivative is exactly the same thing. And remember, when you're using the chain rule, take the derivative of the outside, e to the x is e to the x. Keep the inside the same. So essentially nothing changes, as usually the derivative of e to the x would be. But by the chain rule, I also have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, d dx. Um, oops. 
of negative 3x. And this is the chain rule in a nutshell. You can take the derivative of any function that has something else on the inside. Um, you To do that, you always take the derivative of the outside first, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of negative 3x, derivative of x is just 1, so this would just be negative 3 times 1 or negative 3. And what we get is e to the negative 3x times negative 3, or negative 3e to the negative 3x. So one thing that you could remember from this is if you have a uh, just a multiplier with any e to the x, this is very common because uh, exponential growth, like we saw um, in class last week, such as working with continuously compounded interest, there's usually other numbers in the exponent besides just the variable. But what will happen when you take the derivative of e to the kx, basically any constant multiplied by x, it will always be ke to the kx. Or what you can remember is you have to drop the multiplier out front. Uh, and let's say we had something like e to the x squared. Let's just do one more example. Um, ddx. Just, you know, it, I wouldn't, I would always just use the chain rule just to be careful, but there's certain, you know, processes you can remember. But again, you take the derivative of the outside, e to the x is just itself. Keep the inside the same. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside 2x, and you know, very similar, but what I wanted to just mention is if there's just a multiplier on x, that will always pass through and drop in front. As you, you kind of remember this, the derivative of e to the kx is drop the number, keep e to the kx the same. It's sort of similar to the power rule. Um, but if it's another function, you know, just be careful to not get your rules mixed up. This is one of the most difficult things about uh, differentiation rules is there's so many of them and you have to remember when to use them. But ultimately, it comes down to the chain rule. I think, you know, it's better to remember that than to remember all of these uh, specific cases. Um, but anyways, in the next couple of videos, I want to talk about logarithmic functions, why they're important, uh, and moving into solving equations.